hello and welcome to this week's broadcast. I am Anne LaFollett and I'm a surface pattern designer and an online educator. And I have something really special in store for you this week. This is actually a broadcast that I did back in the month of May. And I am actually republishing it because it was super popular and because we are in week one of a brand new class cohort of my academy program. We just kicked off this week, this week, which is week one of the class of October 2020. And I couldn't be more excited about the incredibly gifted group of women that are going through my pattern design academy program. And the topic today is about the comparison trap. And what I said about it in May is still very, very appropriate, if not more so, right now. So have a listen, and it'll be super fun for you to also see that during the pandemic, I have let my hair grow out. And so I look very different, even though May was only about five months ago. In any event, without further ado, here is the broadcast. I would like to talk to you today about three tips that I'd like to share with you to avoid the comparison trap. And what has a tendency to happen when you start something new is everyone introduces themselves, they tell you a little bit about their background, they might post pictures of some of their recent work, and all of a sudden, you can start to compare yourself with everybody around you. And that is always a losing proposition. And one of my dear friends and former student, Kathleen Lambert, has this amazing expression that's called, don't compare your blooper reel to someone else's highlight reel. And that is what we're going to dive into deeper in this broadcast. Because my three tips are the three ways that I am able to get myself out of that comparison trap. And I thought that you might find them super helpful. So, of course, it's totally natural at the beginning of a new program, whether it's an online course or whether or not it's a, a program you're taking in school or um, something that you're doing in, in your community. It always is very, very natural that at the beginning, people are introducing themselves and you're getting to know other people and you might start feeling things like, oh, gee, I'm a little older than everybody else here. I'm, I wonder if I'm going to be able to keep up. Or another voice that might be popping into the back of your head might be, oh, my goodness, everybody here looks like they're really advanced artists and I don't feel like I really can draw that well. So maybe this isn't the right place for me. Or you might also be thinking, oh my gosh, you know, this looks like there's going to be some technical aspects to what I need to learn and I'm not tech savvy at all. And so I don't know if I'm going to be able to keep up. And all of those, of course, are very natural because you're looking at others and you're comparing yourself to them, but you haven't even started yet. So my three tips are hopefully going to help you to make sure you do keep moving forward. And these should help you continue to move forward because you don't want to give up before you've even started. So tip number one is reaffirm your why. So you made an investment in my course, for example, or in another program, and you had a very, very good reason for making that investment. So remember what that was. It may very well have been that you have always had this dream of seeing your designs on fabric. And now is your opportunity to learn how to do it. It might be that you have had a creative business. And now because of the changes that are happening in the world around us, you want to move that business online instead of having it be, for example, in a brick and mortar environment. It may be that you actually don't have a creative business, but you've always been super creative and you would love to start a creative business. And that's why you made the investment. So remember what that is. Write it down. In my course, for example, you're learning how to use Adobe Illustrator. So create a beautiful illustration with it and then print it out and put it on a tack board, put it on your fridge, put it in your workspace and read it, look at it, repeat it to yourself, because that will really help you remember that you are absolutely doing the right thing and taking action means that you are moving forward towards that goal. 
Number two that I personally find really helpful is focus on the work. If you're in an online program and there are video lessons, watch all of the videos. Maybe you want to watch them multiple times. Um, If there are downloadable cheat sheets, download those and take your own notes, mark them up, make them your own. Do a combination of all of those things to lean into the lessons that are ahead of you and to really fully engage in the material. Do all the practice exercises. Make sure you're taking full advantage of all of the material that is available to you and practice, practice, practice. If you focus on the work at hand, everything else is no longer a distraction. You'll make progress more quickly and you'll also realize what it is that you love about this new practice that you're learning. Don't rush. Take your time. Maybe you want to create a split screen on your computer so you can watch the video on one side and then actually practice the task inside Adobe Illustrator, for example, if you're in my course at the same time. Don't rush through it. Go back, you know, repeat some of the material to kind of absorb it even better, but just focus on the work. And as a result, all of those distractions of comparing yourself to others and seeing what everybody else is doing, you won't have time for it because you'll be focused on your own work and your own learning journey. And then finally, tip number three, which is my favorite, is celebrate every win. I don't think we celebrate enough when we're on a learning journey. I think we have a tendency to not feel like we're moving forward fast enough, or we even feel like we're already falling behind. And of course, that means if you think you're, if you think you're falling behind, you're comparing yourself to something else, either to someone else or to an imaginary timeline that you've established for yourself. And one of the great things about my program and many other online programs is you get access with no expiration so that you can come back to the material, you can take a break if you have to. If you're starting to go back to work and you're going to have less time, you can just do the work on the weekend. You definitely can take your time. And as you go through the journey, celebrate every single win, small, medium, or large. So for example, when you're posting, a lot of the times people will post and say, well, I don't think this is very good, but I'm going to post it anyway. Let's flip that around and say, yay, I completed this process from the beginning to the end. I accomplished my first, for example, repeating pattern. Yay for me. And that will set a great example for others in the same community to celebrate themselves and for us to cheer each other on and to help us continue to move forward together. So I hope that these three tips were helpful. And I always like to say in closing, that I am Emma Follett, and it's never too late to create. Bye for now, and I'll see you next week. If you enjoyed this broadcast, please go to my website, annelafollettart.com. What you see on screen is the cover image that you see as soon as you land on the website, and all the way at the bottom, you can follow me on Instagram at annelafollettart, and there's a link there for you to click on. Also, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Anne LaFollett, and you can click on the subscribe button and then hit that little bell so that you're notified the next time I have a broadcast for you.